this used to be a dress and I cut it all up because the washing machine ate it and I used it to make a pattern to make this dress and now I'm going to make another one out of this fabric here so follow along and we'll uh, finish up with a real cute little sundress to go to a warm weather vacation let's get sewing I've ironed my fabric and I've ironed my pattern pieces now. This is the bodice. This is the middle section here. So I'm going to need two pieces, front and back. If you're working with a directional fabric, I made another one that uh, was dancing Mickey Mouse and I had to make sure that I had the fabric going the right way. So just be sure, be aware of your pattern on the fabric so that you get it going the right way. You also want it going straight to the grain which means you don't want it going kind of wonky, crooked. You want it to go completely straight to the grain. Okay, and you know I don't use pins to cut, so here we go. I'm gonna cut out the bodice, and the, the bodice I only need one for the front and one for the back. So that's the whole back. It does have a little bit of a curve to it, so that gets folded in half. You only need one, and you lay it on the fold. That's the back. And now the front piece. You only need one. Fold it in half. I've already pressed it there. And it goes on the fold as well. And now, this dress has this part here, which goes all the way around to the back, and under the underarm here. And that, to be done in the same fabric, you've got to cut that on the bias. And so, I'm just going to cut some strips right now on the bias. If you've got one of these cutting mats, there's a bias line on there. And I'm also going to cut these about an inch and a half wide. I think this will be enough. Two of these. That I'll sew together. So I cut out the diagonal, as you saw, for trimming out the, the top of the dress. However, if you want to do a little cap sleeve here, I'm going to include two pieces in the pattern. You can not do it, or you can include this cap sleeve. So this is what it looks like without the cap sleeve, and I'm doing one now with the cap sleeve. So the pattern will be including the cap sleeve and you just have to decide if you're going to go with just the spaghetti strap or if you want the cap sleeve. Okay, let's go sew. So the very first thing we need to do is for the two tiers of the skirt, we need to put right sides together and fasten the side seams. So I'm going to do this on the serger so I don't have to French the seam. But you can do it on a regular sewing machine and if you want to French the seams you can or if you want to just press them open you can do that too. And while we're here, we're just going to go ahead and do the other side of this skirt. Make sure you get the sides even because you sure don't want to twist in there. Otherwise, you're ripping out seams. And serging is never fun to rip out. So that's the lower tier done. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the side seams of the, of the top tier that attaches to the bodice. Now I'm going to show you how to do the very best gathers that are so evenly spread out along the length of the fabric that you're trying to meet so that you don't get it all bunched up on one side and then it's flat on the other. So get some embroidery floss. This is not embroidery thread. This is the floss that you get from a craft store. I'm going to use black today just so that it'll stand out, but you can use any color. It's not going to be visible after you're finished. So go ahead and pull the length of it out. Now you're going to put a pin where you want the gathers to start 
Take your embroidery floss and wind it around that so that it doesn't come out. And then under your machine, you're gonna zigzag over top of it. So choose, a, if you've got a, a choice, choose a nice big wide zigzag and zigzag to the end. After you turn your machine on. Go slow if you have to. The, the trick is to not catch the black thread with your zigzag. That's gonna look like that. Now, all you have to do is pull this and it gives you just a perfect gather. Then you measure from side to side against the piece that you're going to attach it to. So now, just to show you what I'm doing, this is going to measure here, all the way over to here, to tie it to this bodice top. So now I know that I need from this point here, to this point here. So now I've got it, I've pulled it as much as I need to. I could pull it in more if the if I needed to make it smaller, but I can stretch it out to what I need it to be. And then I just move these gathers so that they're just beautifully spaced and no gaps with flat patches. And that's how you get perfect gathers. Now I've got the, the gathers done in order to make the attachment. I have to join the front piece to the back piece. So with right sides facing, I'm gonna do these two sides. And so now to get the front and back joined to the top tier of the skirt. And so now with right sides together, we're going to put a seam right here, which will join the bodice to the top tier of the skirt. But in order to get the side seams to match, right now, we're going to go ahead and clip that right there so that you know that that's where the side seam is and it needs to match. Match it all the way along making sure that it's going to fit when you come to actually stitch it. And you want this side seam to match exactly on this side. So now you put another clip there and you know that that's a, a perfect match. Making sure that all your gathers look good. They're evenly spaced, no flat spots. We're just going to go ahead and sew now. see that this is the bodice front top tier of the skirt attached now I'm going to go ahead and attach the bottom tier okay so I'm going to go over this again because it's a little bit complicated so I have put the embroidery floss under a zigzag here and I've already attached the top of the dress to the first tier and now I'm attaching the second tier so that it'll look like this but in order to get these gathers fitted in here properly, because you've got about three times as much fabric, or maybe one and a half times as much fabric as you need to go from side to side on the second tier. So with this embroidery thread, I'm going to pull it. I've already clipped the sides, the side seam to the side seam. And now this embroidery thread, and you can be kind of rough with it because it's not it is not going to break. Sometimes when you do, you know, um, just a gather with a, a straight stitch, sometimes you'll get too much push behind it and it will snap the thread. But this, you don't have to worry about it. You can just get it. Okay, so that's about the length I'm going to need to go from pin, from clip to clip. And now, I'm going to work on, I'm going to put this clip, the embroidery thread, under the clip so it holds it secure. 
and doesn't slip. And now I'm just going to work on making these gathers evenly spaced. Okay, now I have these gathers just the way I want them. And I'm going to go ahead to the sewing machine and stitch with right sides together. The nice thing about doing it this way is when you're stitching and you come across a little area where they maybe look a little too tight, you can still st stretch them out. bottom tier is attached to the top tier. So now we're going to do the part where we fasten the trim onto the front of the dress, like so. This needs a little bit of a gather right here. So we, remember we cut it on the fold. So put a pin right there in the center of the dress and then in order to make sure that you don't get one side too long and one side too short, put one pin in and put the second pin right below it. And that way you'll know when you're doing your gather that you just go from here to here. Let's do that now. going to gather this in a bit. I'm going to take the piece that is going to be the facing and it goes, this is probably the only time you'll ever do not right sides together. It actually gets laid up this way because we're going to put a seam here and then this comes over the back and we'll get stitched like that. So for right now, we're just going to do this seam here with right sides not together. When you're working with bias, you should always give it a little bit of a pull when you're putting it together because then when you flip it over, it's stretched a little and then it, when it goes back into its position, it pulls this snug instead of it being too floppy. It just lays better if you give it a little bit of a stretch. Just a little. Because this has a curve, of course you've got to snip it. If you don't snip it, it's not going to lay flat. And the tighter the curve, the closer the snips have to be. This isn't a real tight curve, like a sleeve, so I don't have to make the, the snips very close. And now this, I'm going to stitch over that seam. So it'll look like that when I'm through. So now we're back at the sewing machine and I'm going to flip this over the front of the dress and I'm going to stitch real close to the edge here so that that will finish that edge. see that will be the new neckline. Pretty gorgeous. Now is the time that you have to decide if you're going to do a spaghetti strap or if you're going to do the cap sleeve because the cap sleeve is going to join here. So you have to decide at this point am I going with a cap sleeve or am I going to go with a spaghetti strap because 
The trim that we just put on the neckline is the same trim that we're going to put on that goes all the way around the back of the dress and comes to the other top side over here. So for this dress, I'm going to have it even and I'm going to go all the way around the back of the dress with the trim as such. And in a second, we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and put that on. But before I go, if I decided that I didn't want the cap sleeve, this has to come all the way around and all the way to the back. Now I've put hardware on here, but you don't need to do that. If you know the size of the person, you can just go ahead and fasten it right to the, to the back of the dress and then the shoulder doesn't adjust. I put it in because my daughter was away and I didn't know how long to make it. So if I was going to turn this one into the spaghetti strap, it would be fastened as such and come right over the top and we would stitch it just the same way I just did on the neckline. And when you get to here, you just keep going and stitch it all the way out and that will give you your spaghetti strap. For right now, on this dress, you're going to see me just do the, the back with, the line, with that trim to here, and then we're gonna put the cap sleeve on. So remember, it's not right sides together. You're actually layering it so that when you turn it over, it encases the seam. Remember again to just give it a little tiny bit of a stretch and that holds it all in place when you come through on the other side. seam here seemed a little bulky so I just trimmed a little bit of it off but also here under the arms you're gonna have to snip so that the bulk has a place to go again maybe like every inch or so just be careful you don't cut right through and into the the stitching that you've done no need to trim right across the back but again on the underarm of this side about every inch or so now we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and turn this over and stitch right here so that that seam is encased and trimmed out properly. I'm just giving this a bit of a press. It'll just make it easier for stitching. Okay. Again, this is where I've stitched the front and folded under. And now I'm doing it on the side here to go around the back of the dress. And I'm approaching the front of the dress again, where the underarm matches the, the front. And if I weren't putting that cap sleeve on, I would just continue sewing all the way around and that would create the spaghetti strap. But because the cap is going on, I can stop here. And that's why I cut it off. So this is the cap sleeve. And these are the two pieces that make that cap sleeve. So in order to do this, I've got my right side done. And now I'm going to do my left side. First of all, to get this piece inside here, I have to measure. So again, I cut, I fold it in half and take the center point and I tip, fold this in half and take the center point and line those up. Now this has to go to the machine with one right side together and one not right side together.
lining up the pins. And now I'm going to stitch this line right here. So now I've just stitched that side, and now I have to close this side. In order to do that, I'm going to fold this up very small and make sure that it's not anywhere near the seam. And now I'm going to seam this, this side that isn't joined yet. There are no corners to snip here because it was done on the serger. If you did it on a sewing machine, you'd have to snip these corners so that you get a nice sharp edge. And now I'm going to turn it inside out. Now it's turned inside out, but it doesn't look as pretty as that. So I'm going to just press it to get it nice and flat and ready to put onto the dress. Now we're ready. So I had daughter try it on and pin the sleeves to the length that she wanted so that the, the dress wasn't too long or too short and it was still comfortable and not going to fall off of her shoulder. So this is where we landed. So I have pinned this on her and now I've taken the dress and I'm going to stitch where we pinned. One sleeve done, front and back, and now I'm just going to do the other one. That's the sleeves attached to the front and the back, and now the last thing to do is the hem. So I'm going to turn it under twice. sewing machine and I'm going to just do a lower your hands I'm going to do a, a stitch very close to the edge there Okay, so here's with the cat sleeve and the spaghetti sleeve. And I, I don't know that this would be a beginner's pattern. Uh, certainly, if you go slow and follow the, the tutorial, you'd be able to do it if you're a beginner sewer. You'll need about two, two yards or two meters of, of fabric to do this. Pretty simple pattern. There's only uh, one, two, three, four, five pieces to make this. So the pattern's available on the friendlyfox.co. I'll include the cat sleeve and the spaghetti sleeve. It's kind of a one size fits all, but I'll put two sizes in there, a small medium and then a medium large. Thanks for watching.